हेलो टीचर्स टुडे वी विल बी टॉकिंग अबाउट अ लेसन प्लान मेड बाय मिस्टर तुषार बोरोटिकर फ्रॉम ज्ञान प्रबोधिनी प्रशाला इन कोलैबोरेशन विद आईसर पुणे साइंस एक्टिविटी सेंटर ही कंडक्टेड दिस लेसन प्लान इन हिज क्लासरूम एंड शेयर्ड अ फ्यू ऑफ हिज एक्सपीरियंसिस विद अस वी विल ऑल्सो बी डिस्कसिंग दोज टुडे सो वेलकम टू बायोलॉजी वीडियो लेसन प्लान इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट अ वेरी बेसिक बायोलॉजी कॉन्सेप्ट दैट the students learn in 6th grades we have tried to make this uh, concept interactive and activity based for the students the concept we are going to talk about today is the worlds of flowers after this the students will learn about different parts of the flowers they will be able to identify the worlds in a flower dissect a hibiscus flower from its outer world to its inner worlds trace the parts of a hibiscus flower precisely and draw and label a diagram of a cross section of the flower with all of its worlds differentiate between the worlds and describe their function you can conduct some of these activities in the lesson plan in groups but before you start the lesson it is always good to remind the students of the flowers that they have seen and the basic parts of the flowers like petals or sepals Usually students have a lot of questions about why plants flower what does a flower do it is always a good idea to talk about the importance and the function of the flowers before we talk about the structure as an introduction to this concept it is ideal to ask the students to go out of the classroom and gather different flowers but if it is not feasible to do this we can always ask them to bring flowers beforehand and bring them to the classroom most likely they will find flowers like marigold sadafuli lily gerberas once we have all the flowers in the classroom we can talk about their similarities and differences at this point we can introduce them to the different worlds of the flowers like calyx corolla androsium gynosium after which we can question them about whether all the flowers have all the worlds they might discover that some of them have all the worlds while the others don't at this point it is a good idea to talk about complete and incomplete flowers after this brief introduction to the topic we can ask the students to draw a schematic diagram of the flower that they have brought then they can compare this diagram with their friends diagram this will help them understand this concept even better and help you assess whether they can point out the similarities and differences between different flowers now demonstrate an activity for getting to know the external and internal structure of the flower for this activity you will require a few hibiscus flowers and sharp blade you have to bisect this flower so take a hibiscus flower and start cutting it from its tip using the sharp blade go on with this uninterrupted till the flower is cut into two halves observe now how it looks using this dissected flower we can show different worlds of the flowers to the student and explain their functions we should encourage the students to make their own observation table that depicts the function of each part while this is being done we can draw their attention to the arrangement of the components of the flower and explain the meaning of the word world after this activity is done with the hibiscus flower the students might go home and perform it with other flowers as well and this may confuse them for this let us ask them to write down their observations and their questions and ask them in the class later where they can be clarified and discussed to begin the next activity that we should conduct show a chart of a flower and its worlds to the class for this we can ask the students to make larger groups and form concentric circles depicting different worlds of the flowers This activity is a role play of different parts of the flowers and their functions. Some students can also play the role of pollinators. Here, the function of different worlds can be reiterated to the students. Students may also come up with questions like why do different flowers have different colored petals or why sepals are green while petals have multiple colors. These questions can be addressed at this point. 
discuss with your class how each whorl is made up of multiple units. Many sepals make a calyx. Many petals make a corolla. This will lead us to a discussion about the detailed structure of the whorls which will automatically lead us to the next activity. Our next activity is dissecting a hibiscus flower. Let the students perform this activity and note down their observations as they are doing it. Let them sketch different parts of the flower as they are removing it. For this activity, you will require one or two hibiscus flowers per student, either a very sharp pencil or a blade. Let us see this activity so that we can guide our students accordingly. Ask the students to take a hibiscus flower and remove the epicalyx. Students should remove each sepal, then each petal and observe these carefully. Once removed, let students observe the staminal tube. Using a sharp pencil or a blade, ask them to slit open the tube from bottom to top. Let them observe the stamen and the anther lobes. They can brush some anther lobes on a glass slide and observe the pollen grains which have fallen out. Tell your students that what remains now is a pistil or a carpel and let them observe the sticky stigma, the tubular style and the rounded swollen ovary. Ask them to cut off the stigma and slice the ovary vertically into two. Let them observe the inside of the ovary with a lens and spot the ovules. With this activity, you can assess their practical skills of dissection and reinforce what they have learnt about the various worlds and their arrangement on the flower. To conclude this concept, we can ask the students to make cutouts of different components of the worlds of the flower and combine them together to make paper flowers. These flowers can be displayed in the classroom as well. After all the activities have been performed, a discussion can be had with the students based on the following questions. What are the dust-like particles inside a flower? What is their function? What is the relationship between a flower and a fruit? What would happen if some whorls of the flower are missing? Can there be flowers where the androsium or the gynosium are not present? This kind of a teaching learning method is a lot of fun for the students as well as the teachers. A major advantage of this is that we have the full attention of the students in the class. More details about these activities and the lesson are given in the text lesson plan which you will find in the description of this video. Please take a look at it and try it out in your own classroom and let us know what your experience was. Thank you.